Every April, 60 fighters begin a brutal journey. The center of the smart cage they go. Four fights in eight months for six belts at six million dollars. This year, the toughest test in MMA gets tougher as challengers from Bellator enter the fray. Oh On night one of the 2024 season, it's a champ versus champ main event. The Mirko Krokop protege, Ante Dillia, returns. Oh! Looking to recapture the magic of two years ago. Ante Dillia, the heavyweight championship! Standing in his way, a former Bellator king. Backed by another one of the all-time greats. It's an event packed with rising stars and heavy-handed giants. A fresh start, a new season, with everything to fight for. From San Antonio, Texas, the path to one million and the belt begins now. Welcome to the PFL 2024 regular season. Fans to San Antonio, Texas, home of our first PFL season event here at the Bowie Center. Fighters already in the building, getting ready for what promises to be an incredible night of professional mixed martial arts action. There's Chelsea Hackett, part of an all-new weight class. She'll be chasing her first ever points in the PFL regular season. Welcome to the PFL Pre-Fight Show, brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's take a look at our main card tonight. This will be on ESPN2 at 10 Eastern. Simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. Ante Delia, Valentin Moldovsky in a main event. Dennis Goldsov, Linton Vassell, a heavyweight co-main. The introduction of our women's flyweight division with Dakota Dichva and Lisa Malden and Liz Carmouche. Juliana Velasquez in a trilogy grudge match. Here is our early card. We'll begin the night with a couple of showcase bouts right here on ESPN Plus. Then we get right to the league action. Chelsea Hackett, Jenna Bishop, Kana Watanabe, Shayna Young. From there, it's heavyweights. Tyla Santos making her PFL debut. And we'll finish with a couple of heavyweight bouts on the early card as well. First bout is about half an hour. From now, Sean O'Connor, Randy Couture, Tyron Woodley, very happy to be here in San Antonio for the beginning of our 2024 campaign. Randy, we've been talking about it for years. Four fights in eight months. It is the toughest test in mixed martial arts. And with the PFL acquisition of Bellator and the deepening of the roster and the talent pool, well, the toughest test just got tougher. Yeah, it just got crazy. We got eight championship fighters from Bellator, 210 marquee names coming over from that monolith of a promotion that is bellator that makes the toughest test in mma that much tougher returning champions from the pfl ranks also some bellator champions coming over including folks we will see fighting tonight so we got five returning pfl champions we got two pfl europe champions this is a loaded roster <laughs> it's gonna be a fun night as we start with the heavyweights everything is bigger in texas in our main event Features a PFL champion in Ante Dillia. Valentin Moldovsky held at one time the Bellator interim heavyweight champion. So some champs versus champs action in our first main event of the season. Let's talk about walking trouble, Ante Dillia. It was only an injury that took him out of the season last year. He hasn't lost in a long time. He had a victory against Morris Green and then suffered an injury that took him out of the 2023 season. But he was successful in the 2022 season, winning his first belt in the smart gauge. Here he gets against Matias Sheffield. Those hands on display, direct from Mirko Krokop, special delivery. Guy's a judo practitioner. He's great at taking you down, smothering you with punches. You better strap him on tight because Ante Dillia is going to come and get in your face and make you earn it for sure. And when you watch Ante Dillia fight, you're going to be impressed with his speed. You're going to be impressed with his athleticism. But he's fighting a guy in Valentin Moldovsky who's a little bit smaller for the heavyweight division and maybe even faster than Dillia is. What's the key for Moldovsky? I'm impressed with his pedigree. He's trained by MMA royalty, Fedor Emelianenko. When you look at him, he understands how to close the distance. 
I feel like when you're a little bit sharper than the other heavyweights, you got to use head motion, you got to use aggressiveness to get forward and land heavy punches. That's how he became the interim Bellator champion because he understood the task at hand and he got the job done. Today, he's going to have to do the same exact thing. It's a crazy fight. You guys didn't give me the memo on the slick tie, but I left a little bit of room for the heat that's coming from the heavyweights. Ante Dilia, Valentin Moldovsky, Team Krokop versus Team Fedor. It's our first main event of the 2024 season. And there is walking trouble, the 2022 PFL heavyweight champion, Ante Dillian. But he's been training under Mirko Krokop for a long time. Valentin Moldovsky, he gets to sit under the learning tree of the legend Fyodor Emelianenko. He utilizes the same things that made Fedor so good. Speed, quickness, power in his hands. Moldovsky pouring it on, and it's over. Nice combination by Ante Dilia. Oh, my head! And Ante Dilia knocks down Sheffield again. That's enough! Domination by Valentin Moldovsky. Dilia starting on Lisa Barrage. And here comes the ground attack from Ante Dilia. How do you spell dominant? M-O-L-D-A-V-S-K-Y. Fourth man on the broadcast tonight, Brett Okamoto, MMA insider. He's got a little more on the pedigree, the legends behind these two main event fighters. Brett? I mean, what can I tell any of you that you don't already know about Fedor Emelianenko and Mirko Krokop? Fedor will be in the building cornering Valentin Moldovsky. Unfortunately, Mirko Krokop couldn't make it over for this one. He had some business to attend to in Croatia. But, of course, you will see uh, his influence on Ante Delia as you have throughout his entire career. And he has said, hey, man, Fedor was an idol of mine as well. I would love to get a win over one of his fighters with him standing cage side. Can you guys imagine... Had we had these guys, this royalty here, cage side, both of them in the main event. Unfortunately, only Fedor here, but Valentin Moldovsky saying, hey, I love that storyline, but I'm not too interested in here. I'm, I'm here to focus on myself. We can be thinking about it a little bit more than those guys, though, as we watch this main event, guys. Well, we got Randy here. We got Tyron here. We got me here. That's plenty of MMA royalty. <laughs> there we go. That's going to be cage side. Three generations. <laughs> now let's talk about how we're betting our main event. We've got the experts here like we always do. Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker. How do you bet this main event? Oh, Sean, it's great to be back for another regular season as always my partner Ian Parker. Let Mr. Woodley know we also did not get the tie memo. But Ian Parker, that does not matter. We are slick either way. We're starting with the big boys. We're starting with that main event. We're starting with your best friend in 2024. How do we handicap it? Coach, let's start off by going to the PFL betting big board brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Coach, when you're talking these heavyweights, we are hearing Fedor, we are hearing Krokop, and we have all the right reason to. However, these odds are incorrect. They should be flip-flopped. How am I getting plus 124 with Ande Dalia? Bigger. I, I think the speed is going to be pretty even. I think he's the better wrestler, the better striker. And we've seen Valdovsky in his last two fights. He got knocked out by Linton Vassell. Dalia is a better striker. Give me the dog in the main event with Ante Delia walking trouble. I think he gets the win. Let's go. And we have a lot more to get through throughout the night. And Sean O'Connell, as I send it back to you, we'll be back in a little bit. You got to understand, Ian Parker was the underdog for being able to say betting big board without messing it up. It's, it's, it's kind of next level when you talk about the duck. Back to you. <laughs> You're getting plus money on Ian Parker pronouncing things correctly almost all the time. But look, he's taken the dog in the main event starting the season hot the duck gets cracking let's talk about our co-main event dennis goldsoff linton vassell we'll get to vassell in just a second but t wood i want to start with dennis goldsoff this is a massive man a combat sambo world champion level pedigree he's got all the skills he's got all the athleticism he's got all the size he does not yet have a million dollar check and a pfl belt is this his year it's nothing like going to the super bowl We're getting so close each time and coming in runner-up. There's no better time to start than right now on a fresh season where he can get himself back in position, put himself back in the running for contention for another opportunity to fight for a title. I agree with you. He has the ability. He has the clinch work. He has the ground and pound. He has all the tangibles. Now he needs to put it together when it counts. And also, you know this is a grueling season. 
he has to make sure that he stays healthy and also get the finish when he can get it so he can be ready to get it cracking on the next round. Well, he'd be better, he better be here in top form tonight because Dennis Goldsoft faces an incredibly tough test in the newcomer. He came over for Bellator, Linton Vassell, a former light heavyweight who decided he's going to test the waters at heavyweight. Randy knows a thing or two about that. It's been working out well for Linton Vassell so far. You know, he's a track athlete. In 2018, he started kickboxing. Now, in 2019, he decided he's tired of cutting weight. He moved up to heavyweight. He's on a five-fight win streak at heavyweight. He's got great hands. He knows what it takes to be in a championship fight, to stay focused when the pressure's really on. And the pressure is definitely going to be on here tonight against Goldsong. But he's got what it takes. Can he get it done against the Russian tonight? That's the real question. Linton Vassell, Dennis Goldsong in your heavyweight co-main event. Tonight's card also features a brand new weight class in the PFL, women's flyweights. We'll take a break and come back talking about them, but there's one woman in this division that you need to become acquainted with. Rising star, undefeated, Dakota Ditcher. Last year, winning the European tournament was a big, a big moment for me. It's something I'd worked for a long, long time for. But that journey hasn't finished. I'm doing the global tournament this year. I still have the same emotions, the same feelings. I still want to win. Show people what I'm about. I feel like I'm going to be one of the targets this year. Coming in with an undefeated record. I've just won the European title. You've got to win each fight to get to the top. I'm looking forward to bringing this title home now. PFL on ESPN Plus is brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve. When you're ready for more, explore new opportunities at airforce.com slash reserve. Celsius, live fit, the official energy drink of the PFL. 
DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. And introducing a new era of MMA with Takedown as the official apparel partner of the PFL. Welcome back to the PFL pre-fight show. A little reminder here, our main card. First fight will be 10 Eastern on ESPN2, simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. We talked the main event in the co-main. Those are heavyweight features. Time to talk women's flyweight. Liz Carmouche, Juliana Velasquez, Dakota Ditchva, Lisa Malden. All right, Randy Couture, please educate me on how Liz Carmouche, Bellator champion, at 40 years of age, is still doing <laughs> it at this level. Well, she has a warrior spirit that's after my own heart, I got to say. She is not slowing down at 40 years old. She brought her, P her Bellator championship belt into the PFL regular season, signed up to fight four times in eight months. She's an amazing athlete, very, very well-rounded, great striking skills, great submission skills. We've seen her beat Velasquez both in TKO and by striking and by submission. So she's got all the skills, but can't she figure out what Velasquez is going to bring differently to this time around so she gets the same outcome that she wants. That's where the real guest is, and it's going to be an interesting night. Look, this is a grudge match. Twice before, Juliana Velasquez has climbed into the cage trying to get Liz Carmouche out of her way. She's failed in both of those attempts, but she says it's a new environment, there's new stakes, it's a PFL season now. How does Velasquez get it done? Velasquez is two on Carmouche. The right side of her record is blemished by this young lady. She has to go in there, not only just for the million dollars at the end of it, she has to go in there with some, a chip on her shoulder. Take those fights, the lessons she's learned from them, go to the lab, come back a better fighter. You can't think about what the referee did. I heard her say the referee stopped it early. That has to be blotted out of your mind. You have to go out there. This is a new fight. We all would love an opportunity to avenge a loss. She's getting that opportunity tonight. Let's see if she takes advantage of it. And the winner of this fight will be positioning themselves, potentially, depending on the points, as a favorite in the brand new flyweight division. Another rising star who might be a favorite in some people's minds, Dakota Dicheva, PFL Europe champion. As we build the Champions League of MMA, this is your European champion. She's 25 years old. She's already 10 and 0. Nine of her 10 wins have come inside the distance. Eight of those have been knockouts. This is a familiar environment, the smart cage for her. She's 5 and 0 with four first round finishes. Dakota Dicheva and Lisa Malden in a flyweight feature to open our main card. Definitely going to those long range strikes. Going after that rear naked choke. This is going to be a finish. Lisa Malden, first round submission. Oh. Dichiba, right hand. Lisa Malden once again on top. Very much looking forward to that matchup. The first time I saw the number in terms of betting favorite, I, I thought it was a little bit crazy. I think Dakota uh -huh. yesterday was a huge favorite. But let's lean on our experts. Jonathan Coachman, Ian Parker, the rest of our main card. How are we betting these fights? You know, Sean, when you're undefeated, when you have uh, so much momentum behind you, Ian Parker, well, the sports books are going to recognize that. And yes, she was a big favorite yesterday. Still a big favorite today as well. What do we do? Well, Coach, let's go to the PFL betting big board presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, where it will show you She's a bigger favorite than what she was yesterday. Minus 2,400, an absolute absurd number. But if you look at her fights, maybe it justifies that. However, her opponent, Lisa Maldine, very tough on the ground, very scrappy, got good submissions, good defense there as well. However, if Dakota Dekeva can keep this fight on the feet, I'm saying this right now, she could win the whole season if it stays on the feet. Can she do it? I believe she can. Let's get that number down a lot further by KO or TKO at minus 190. I'm going with the Europe champ. Let's go with Dakota. All right, that's the first fight on the main card. What about the second, Carmouche and Velasquez? Where are you going here? I'm going with Liz Carmouche here. She may be 40, but Velasquez is 37, so to me, the age doesn't matter. And Liz has found the fountain of youth. She must have gotten it from Randy because she looks better than she ever has, and she's finishing people. Nothing shows me here why the third time would be a charm for Juliana. She hasn't fought since she's lost to Liz. Liz finished her last fight and won before that. 
at minus 205. I wish the number was a little bit lower, but I'm going Liz Carmucci here. I think she gets it done for the third time. It's close enough that we can give it out straight, and I like that a lot. Let's go back to the big boys. Let's go back to the heavyweights. Dennis Goldslop and Linton Vassell, they're right before our main event. So that means they're the co-main. What do you like here? I think the guy said it best. Dennis Goldsov has all the tools to be a champ, but when he gets there, he just falls a little bit short. However, he's been great in the first fight every time of the season. Vassell's got a, Vassell's got a lot of power. He does, and usually he likes to be the better wrestler here in this matchup. He will not. That number at minus 122, it should be at least minus 180. I'm going Dennis Goldsov here. I think he's better anywhere the fight goes. Outside of a knockout shot that he doesn't see coming, Goldsov gets the win here and moves on. And so now you have a pick on every single main card fight. Do not forget, all of you watching at home, the DraftKings Sportsbook is the official betting partner of the PFL. And right now, I mean right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Sign up with the code PFL. Bet 5 bucks and get your $150 in bonus bets instantly. Sean O'Connell still to come. We're going to break down fights on the early card. But in the meantime... Let's send it back to you, sir. Randy, if I found out that you were sharing the fountain of youth with Liz Carmouche and not with me, <laughs> I'm going to get really upset. <laughs> we work together. We're around each other a lot. You can't be yeah. having those secrets out to Carmouche and not me. That's our main card. Let's take a look at the early card. That'll be right here exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. We'll start the night with a couple of showcase bouts, and from there we get into the league action. Chelsea Hackett, Jenna Bishop, in our first ever women's flyweight regular season fight. Connor Watsonabi, Shana Young, Steve Mowry, Oleg Popov, a couple of Bellator veterans. And a feature at the end of that, Marcelo Gomes, Daniel James. Let's talk about this heavyweight matchup. Marcelo Gomes and Daniel James, this is a rematch. They have faced one another before. It didn't work out for Marcelo Gomes the first time. How did you get it done tonight? I'm giving him a nickname. Marcelo, go hard or go home, Gomes. This is an opportunity where your opponent has lost the first fight already at the scale, right? This is your chance for redemption. All of his 10, all of his 10 victories are by finish. He's looking to finish or he's putting himself in the fire. So when you look at his fight record, it's either he finished or got finished. So this is a situation where he needs to recognize his opponent and just wait about a little bit. I would go to the body early and try to look for the KO. Well, T. Wood mentioned it. Daniel James missed weight. You don't often see heavyweights having to cut. He was cutting 20 plus pounds. He's a massive, massive heavyweight. He just missed. So that puts him down a point in the league standings, regardless of how this fight finishes. Does it play a factor in the fight itself? It's hard to say. I mean, does that put a little desperation in you that you know you're already losing a point no matter how you finish this fight? I think he's going to go out and do his job. Now, will a weight cut affect his, his performance and his conditioning? We'll have to see that. But this guy's got tons of power. Not afraid to step right in the pocket, let those heavy big fists go. And he is a knockout specialist. Very, very good at finishing and a very, very big opponent. He's going to be ready to go wherever it goes. He knows his opponent needs to make the changes to get a different outcome. He thinks he's going to close the distance, and they say they're prepared for that. We'll see tonight. A couple of big boys in our early card feature fight. How are we betting the early card? We send it back out to the experts for that. Coach Ian. Oh, Sean, we've got a lot more to get to. Let's start with the last fight on the early card, Gom and James. Take me back to your favorite. I like to call it your best friend, Ian. Let's start there. Coach, let's do it. PFL betting big board brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> you gotta love it. It's my best friend, so why not? Let's go. Marcelo Gomes, you know, the rematch here is interesting because in the first fight, Gomes was winning the whole time. He kind of gassed, and James knocked him out later in the fight. James missing weight at heavyweight is scary. Okay, three pounds over the limit in that. For me, Marcelo Gomes, the change he has to make, uses jujitsu. Don't get tired. You win. Minus 175. I'm gonna go there. I'm going to go there. It's also the positive side of the storyline as well. All right, let's move on. Ivanov and Bilostini. How are you handicapping that one? You know what? Bil Bilostini is an interesting prospect. A lot of knockouts. However, Blago Ivanov doesn't get knocked out. He is essentially a zombie who can come forward. He can hold you against the cage. He's got good Greco-Roman and judo. At plus 150, I'm going dog here. I like Blagoy even off. If he doesn't get knocked out in round one, I can see him winning by decision or later on in the fight. He just doesn't get tired. He keeps coming forward. This is an interesting matchup for the veteran. 
Yeah, let's talk Lucas Brennan quickly. And I know the number, you don't like it, but you can bet a prop here. I'll make this very quick, Coach. Lucas Brennan is a submission specialist. Last fight won by knockout. Minus 1,200 is absolutely insane. Even the submission, <laughs> I think, might be too high. But if you're going to do a prop here, submission's the way to go. That's his specialty. He should get it done. This should be a spotlight play for him. I get a call every day of game week. Where's Parker's parlay? Where is Parker's parlay? I ask you the same question, Ian. I don't know why you have to shout. You can just ask me nicely. But listen, Kana Watanabe is going to be the first leg of our parlay. She's been a very good member of Bellator for a long time. She lost by split decision before getting up because she didn't get the title shot with Liz Carmouche. However, her opponent missed weight as well. Kana is strong, good wrestling, good striking. She's going to be the first leg. And that minus 270 is going to come down because we're going to attach her right now to Liz Carmouche. And we're going to get it down to plus odds. Let's go. I love it. Finally, our bold prediction brought to you by Puncher's Chance. What do you like here? I'm going to stick with Liz Carmouche. I'm going round two submission. See if she can get it done for the third time in a row. I absolutely love it. We are set to go. Sean, back to you. I want to note, as we hear the duck quacking about a plus 1,100 payout, that Ian Parker has a history of cashing those bold predictions. He says second round submission victory for Liz Carmouche. Now, the Doug got really specific with this current crack. I think, is there a chance? Potentially, yes. Velasquez lost twice. She could come in trying to go for takedown. She can try to ground and pop from top, leaving arm bars and guillotines available. So, he actually could be correcting this at that point. And for 1100 bucks, it might be a good bet for you. Let's talk about what this fight is for Liz Carmouche, though. Because she's already beat Velasquez twice. Velasquez, by the way, a former Bellator champion in her own right. How do you make it happen three times? You know, she's making a wild guess as to what uh, Velasquez is going to bring different this time to get the outcome that she wants, and, and you never know. But she does have a submission victory, so it isn't within the realm of possibility that it goes that way. Great fights coming up next, but take a look at Liz Carmouche, Juliana Velasquez. I come into this with the trilogy fight that she has so much to lose and so much to gain. Na primeira luta contra a Liz Carmouche, foi um erro de arbitragem. Na segunda luta, o meu erro foi ter entrado com a cabeça de, de vingança. There's the potential that if she loses this fight, she's done for the season. But also, there's a million dollars on the line. So in my mind, that makes this fight so much more dangerous. Uma casa nova, como eu disse, vai ser para mim. Eu estou encarando a Liz Carmouche como uma adversária nova. She's somebody that's willing to do something dirty, willing to risk it all and do something completely unorthodox.